With Finance 85, Toyota Northeast will find a way to put you in the Toyota of your dreams. Toyota Northeast, Morse Road at I-270. Greta Garbo and Melvin Douglas star Saturday. The Columbus Bowling Classic in conjunction with the Columbus Bowling Proprietors Association is brought to you by Kuppenheimer Factory Stores. Or you buy men's suits, sport coats, and slacks direct from the manufacturer. By Graham Ford, the big one, 707 West Broad Street. By Columbus Magnavox and Appliance Centers, with three locations to serve you. And by Modern Finance, the simple interest loan company. Today on the Columbus Bowling Classic, last week's winner, Jamie Shirley, meets Mitch Manise, a rookie in the opening match. The winner of that match goes on to meet veteran Dean Bowles, and then it's on to our top seed, one of the great stylists of our area, and we're talking about Bill McCorkle. We'll be back after this timeout. Those of you who live in surrounding cities and are used to seeing 50 cars or less when you go new car shopping, I invite you to Graham Ford, the big one, 707 West Broad Street in Columbus, where you'll see 600 cars on display, 150 of them inside. Great advantages for you, like you get your choice of colors, your choice of options, and the price absolutely is right when you have that kind of a selection. The reason simply is that with that many cars, you don't need to have a big profit per item. Try the big one, Graham Ford. Uh, sir? Yes? If I said you can now buy this famous Kuppenheimer suit for 40% less than other quality brands, what would you say? I'd say it's stolen. <laughs> Assuming it's not stolen. Kuppenheimer for 40% less? Right. You're a fence. No, look. Kuppenheimer makes its famous clothing and sells direct. With no middleman, you save 40%. 40%? Right. You'll never get away with this, you know. Stealing famous Kuppenheimer. Kuppenheimer right. direct. Value so good, it's hard to believe. Who put the squeeze in the freeze? Who? Who put the squeeze in the freeze? Who? Tropicana. Introducing new, fresher-tasting Tropicana orange juice. Frozen concentrate that puts the taste of fresh squeezed in the freeze. Want the taste that tastes like you squeezed it yourself? Just say... Squeeze me, you're right, so Tropicana. We're Pass, pass. <laughs> Oh, just can't deal with it, sort of. You need Puff Velvet Touch. But I thought Puffs had a nice soft scent. These don't. These are new unscented Puffs. Same velvety softness to comfort your sore nose, but with no scent. I like these new unscented mm -hmm. Puffs. Well, I still like softly scented Puffs. Well, now you both have your choice. Now that's a witty hand. <laughs> Puffs, now a new unscented and softly scented titles and is 16th on the all-time money list in professional bowling the great Roy Buckley Roy always a pleasure to have you back with us as a color analyst. Well, thank you Dix pleasure being here okay we're gonna get with match one now as we have a rookie against a veteran and that's always a lot of fun and we're speaking of course of Jamie Shirley who won the championship last week and his competitor here in the opener Mitch Manis now Shirley uh, We'll start, and it's interesting, Manise, the rookie, gave him the choice of lanes when Ma Manise really uh, had that choice. Uh, maybe a head game, uh, maybe just uh, inexperience. Well, I'm not real sure what it is. We'll find out here in a little bit. He had time to practice on the pair, and maybe he liked to finish on lane three. Okay, we open with a strike, and here you see the uh, concentration of Jamie Shirley. That was a powerful ball. He had a little high, really, wasn't it? Yeah, but the action and the pins just mixed up so good. Here's our rookie, Mitch Manise. Now, he's probably got a couple of butterflies on this opening shot. And he's just a little bit uh, light with the ball, and he'll come back for his spare. Since this is his first trip, we'll do a little research on him. Mitch is a 196 average bowler, and as Roy Buckley pointed out, he has a 300 high single game and an 826 high series. Now, that means that this guy gets absolutely torrid when uh, when he gets hot he really gets hot huh yeah he can throw a lot of strikes and he uh, makes a spare so Manise is off with a spare and Jamie Shirley off with a strike as we move to frame two and of course Manise will stay on the lanes and he's probably going to settle down rather quickly 
Uh, in Junior League Bowling, he won two North Central Ohio uh, tournaments, uh, one state tournament, and finished uh, uh, 25th in the nation. Not too bad a deal for this young man, Mitch Manise, construction worker, single. Tell he's young, he likes uh, baseball, golfing, and rock concerts in that order. Okay, he's off and rolling now with a spare and a strike, and that second uh, frame is a little easier once you get that uh, first shot out of your way, isn't it? Well, he throws such a powerful ball that all he has to do is hit the right side of the head pin, and he's got a pretty good chance of getting a strike. Well, the lefty goes after him now. And Jamie Shirley is off and running with a double. Now, Shirley, who won last week's show, uh, jumped... Uh, considerably in the uh, the point uh, situation which we'll explain uh, uh, later but right now you can see some pretty important numbers there 211 average uh, uh, to high average was 214 of course he has the 300 high, high single and a 791 high series and he loses the single pin the eight pin which stops his string uh, at two this is just an extremely powerful ball. If you saw his hand rotate around that ball, and he just put so much energy on it, just cuts through the pins, chops that five right off the eight. Just extremely powerful ball. Back to live action for the spare, and he has it. So Jamie Shirley leads this match by nine pins over Mitch Manise, and Manise will now come up for his third and fourth frames. We were talking about the point system uh, moments ago. Uh, Jamie Shirley is in second place behind John Irvin. Irvin has 41 points. Shirley has 34. Mike Lanise is third with 32. Bill McCorkle and Bobby Moore tied for fourth and fifth with 19 points each. Chuck Beagle and Jim Stroth tied for sixth and seventh with 17 each. John Carraway is eighth with 14. And ninth and tenth places are a tie between Tim Rogers and Dean Bowles with 12 points apiece. And, of course, uh, the top four-point earners come back for the 16th week and the $2,500 up for grabs on that 16th show of the Columbus Bowling Classic. You earn points uh, in the following manner, 20 for winning a show, 15 for second, 10 for third, 5 for fourth, and 2 points each time you cash in the tournaments. Mitch Manise, after a spare in the first frame, has a double working and hammers another. And uh, for a rookie, this guy isn't doing bad, Roy. It looks pretty calm. Looks pretty calm. Tremendous amount of uh, turn and twist on the ball. Stays down nicely, too, doesn't he? Yeah, he throws the ball pretty nice. He's got pretty good form. Back to live with Jamie Shirley, and he needs a strike here and does not carry it. So now Mitch Benice has taken over the lead and is uh, jumping on him pretty good here. The difference is 12 pins, and keep in mind, Manise has a chance to stretch that lead because he has a string of three going, and uh, Jamie Shirley has settled into some spare shooting here. This is his second uh, spare effort in a row. And he covers. Roy, you uh, brought up a really good point on, uh, uh, as a color analyst on these shows uh, several years ago, that bowlers should uh, as absolutely box the two lanes and separate them totally and not carry uh, thoughts from one to the other. I think that's the best advice you can ever be given when you're shooting match game competition like this. Now you have to keep them separate. You have to keep your mind on which lane you're on and not what happened the frame before. Well, Shirley comes up with a strike in the fifth frame and at least has something uh, working again. Watch the turn on this ball. This ball looks like it has a motor in it. <laughs> just absolute power. Just rips through the pins. That's what you brought brought you back to Columbus with us, isn't it? That's why I'm sitting here now uh, out on the first part of the winter tour. It's the first time in 15 years I haven't been out on the winter tour. And this is exactly why. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, back when they gave you a shot, there was nobody better at putting it where it had to be. He got a little slow on this ball. Just really didn't get good projection. Just lost the ball. Ball hooked a little bit early on him and just cut through the head. See if he can make a spare, and he does. And uh, Mitch Manise, our rookie, is uh, putting in a fine showing as he leads by 10 after five frames, 98 to 88 in the fourth. Manise with a spare and Shirley with a strike. We'll be back after this timeout. For over 40 years, Central Ohio borrowers have relied on Modern Finance Company when a cash loan is required. Look for the modern sign in your area. Today, modern associates are ready and willing to continue the modern tradition of friendly, courteous service. A phone call will start your loan request on its way. 
You can count on Modern to take care of your cash needs from fifty to fifty thousand dollars. Just call your nearby Modern office. Be modern, be modern today. It's big. It means savings. And, and it's, it's going, going on, on now. now. The Columbus Magnavox and Appliance After Inventory Clearance Sale. All inventory is reduced now for a quick sale. This Magnavox 25-inch color console TV now just $3.99. This 25-watt audio rack system now just $2.99. The After Inventory Clearance on now at Columbus Magnavox and Appliance, North, East, and West. Columbus Magnavox and Appliance, the big, big voice in quality. quality. The last word in price. If that old bedroom set of yours has seen better nights, come into Value City Furniture. We have hundreds of complete bedroom sets like this one for just $4.98. Has that old recliner you're sitting in seen better days? Value City Furniture has hundreds of recliners like this one at just $2.98. Come to Value City Furniture now during our 90 days same as cash sale. Yes, 90 days same as cash. Come on in. Come With Action 6 News on WTVN-TV. We're the team. This afternoon, and tomorrow, they start at 9.30 in the morning, run at 11, 12.32, 3.30, and 5 o'clock. $15 entry fee, and this is a great opportunity to find out if you can play with the big boys. Uh, this is uh, pretty high-powered bowling. Uh, I think uh, many bowlers outside the Columbus area would like to uh, think they could bowl with the Columbus bowlers, and this is a great way to find out as we see the replay of the 10-pin lead. Yeah, that ball hit just a little bit flat, a little late in the pocket, and the 6-pin just didn't get up out of the gutter to kick the 10 out. For the oh. spare? Whoa, he gets it back. Roy, would you, uh, would you advise young players from outside the uh, area who really don't know how good they are uh, to come in? Because I think you can learn something even if you can't qualify. Oh, definitely. The, the, any kind of tournament you can bowl would be great. And this would be a real good one because you only have three games to do it. And if you can do it in three games and then come on TV and compete, uh, it'll give you a real good idea what you can do uh, on the national level. Well, we got a problem here with Jamie Shirley as he uh, is trailing in the match and now finds a real problem here. Yeah, he got over this ball real quick and really did get good projection and just cut right through the heart of the pins. He's going for it, and he comes up with three of the five, so Jamie Shirley falls further off the pace. Now 23 pins down as he is open in the sixth frame. Now remember, this is the winner of last week's show, and you would think that would throw a little fear into Mitch Manise, but apparently nobody told Mitch that he won the show last week. Well, maybe he didn't say it. <laughs> okay. This My name is... My name is Dick Shore. Our color analyst is Roy Buckley, and you were saying? This match is not over yet. The last couple of shots that uh, Manish has thrown were just a little bit, uh, a little too lackadaisical. He's going to have to pick up his tempo because, you know, Jamie isn't going to just give it to him. And this is a good reason why. He just had a bad frame before, and he come right back and threw a great strike. Now Manish leads it by 23, and he now works the seventh frame. Well, he picked that tempo back up on that one, so you know he's not as lax a daisy as he was on the last two frames. You can just tell by the swing of his arm and how he got through that shot. He just really hit that ball good at the bottom of the swing. With authority. Yes. So both bowlers are working strikes in the seventh frame. We go to the eighth frame with Manise. Mitch leads it by 23, but you can have a 20-pin swing right here. With one, uh, if one would double, the other is open. Uh, you got a tie ball game. Oh, when the other guy's working on one, you really got to keep your concentration. Oh, what a great shot by Manis! He got through that one pretty good. He got it just a little bit wider, but uh, it did make it back. That ball got out there around that fourth board, and it just come right back and just kicked that 10-pin right out of it. And Shirley tries to match him and loses the seven pin, and oh, does that hurt. He's now down by 33 pins, only two frames to go. 
Roy, that may have been the most important shot he uh, th has thrown today. Yeah, that could possibly have been the match because this isn't really exactly a gimme spare for, when the, for the guys that throw that great big hook. 243 is our high single game up to the moment, and that is John Urban's score, and that really does it for Jamie Shirley as he misses the spare behind the, uh, the tap. He shows only 142 now in the eighth frame and is uh, trailing by about 45 pins. This is what I was more or less talking about. When they do leave this fair, they have to really kill the ball. And when they kill it, they just don't have the accuracy and uh, the body tone and uh, control that they have when they're throwing the ball in this manner. Now he comes back with another single pin. So Jamie's in big trouble. By the way, the uh, winner of our series will receive a suit, shirt, and tie from Kuppenheimer Factory Stores. The high game, a sport coat and slacks from Kuppenheimer. Our Irv Boyman at uh, Kuppenheimer Factory Store is really supporting our bowling, and we appreciate that. If anybody should roll a 300 game, we have a $700 VCR from Magnavox and Appliance Centers and a free auto paint job from Mako. And I remember years ago when we had the, a couple of years ago, when we had a 300 game, uh, Roy, you and I were up in Toledo, if you'll recall, and you said, don't worry about it. There is no way that that can happen to you, and it did. Well... <laughs> you ought to take to get a number in the lottery too. <laughs> well I'll tell you it was a lot of fun anyway and it was Brian Miller who uh, threw the only 300 ever thrown on this show hey let his swing get away from him on this shot and just didn't keep it uh, keep it in tight his elbow got a little bit to the right got around top of it didn't really get the good lift and turn on it and the ball just slid now Manise Riddy is in great shape with a 43 pin lead if he makes a spare he can't lose this match well he misses a spare can he lose it now uh, Manise is 31 up I still don't see how he can yeah, this is a this is really not an easy shot here you have two pins uh, one right behind the other and you have to hit in this case either straight on or to the right of that front pin so the ball carries through and carries the back pin which just which he didn't do. He just didn't play uh, the right side of the pin well enough. If Manise strikes out, he goes with 223. That is still well off of our uh, high single game, but uh, he certainly has this match wrapped up as Jamie Shirley uh, with a strikeout could go only out, out with 192. So this one is over. He comes straight back to a certain degree. That time he did. He kind of wrapped inside and out. And by that, I mean he, he got the ball behind his back and then came around, opened his shoulders up, and then closed them up right at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the swing. And a couple of shots there on the, the two eight that he just left. His swing went out a little bit. So Mitch Benice now is uh, our winner of game one today. He has a score of 213 with a spare coming up, a spare shot coming up here. Remember, Jamie Shirley at best could shoot 192. So at the conclusion of this ball, we will call game number one, and our rookie, Mitch Manise, will move along to meet Dean Bowles in game two of the Columbus Bowling Classic after this timeout. This is Donnie Rowland, a dominant figure on the Columbus bowling scene, now in business to serve all Columbus area bowlers at Rowland Bowling and Billiard in the National Road Plaza next to Kmart on West Broad Street. Donnie and his partner Vic Favreau offer 18 years experience in the crucial area of fitting and drilling bowling balls. You'll find a large supply of bowling equipment, plus a complete line of pool tables and accessories all very reasonably priced. Choose from foosball tables and coin-operated tables and games at Roland Bowling and Billiard. Seville Lanes in the Northern Light Shopping Center is constantly improving facilities and conditions for you. This management team is dedicated to low prices and friendly service. Open bowling is available all the time at 75 cents a line, except weekend evenings when it's a dollar a line. Seville also features Tom Franklin's full-line pro shop and a game room with over 30 video games. Learn to bowl programs are available, and at 75 cents a line, what a great opportunity to learn at clean, modern Seville Lanes in the Northern Light Shopping Center. Do you know someone who has performed a distinguished public service to our community? If so, you'll want to nominate them for the 1985 Jefferson Award, sponsored by WTVN-TV, 610 Radio, and QFM 96. For nomination forms, write WTVN Radio or call 224-1271. Deadline, February 8th. You know the Graham Ford is the largest Ford dealer in Central Ohio? They have 600 cars, trucks, and vans in stock. 
And of course, that offers you great advantages. Number one, you can buy for less because Graham Ford does not need the amount of profit per car when they have 600 of them in stock. Your color selection is fabulous, and all the options you want, all in one location. So why shop from dealer to dealer? Try the big one. Graham Ford, 707 West Broad Street in Columbus. Could your denture cleanser clean a triple stain of cherry, coffee, and tobacco? Extra strength Effortant can. Effortant removes even stubborn stains between teeth. It can be a big swing in the ninth or tenth frame if you finish on the lane you like the best. Well, Manise has really uh, uh, opened this match with a strong strike on that lane. And now we look at uh, Dean Bowles for the first time today. Dean, as I mentioned, a veteran of the Columbus Bowling Classic. 215 average, 299 high single, 816 twice he has bowled and rips it again. So Bowles opens with a strike, Manise with a strike, and we move to uh, the left side with Dean Bowles, who has a huge rooting section. Uh, uh, back in the uh, back of our uh, bowling lanes, screaming, Dean, Dean, the bowling machine. And you can see he can be that. 816, that's rather awesome, isn't it? That's a large score. And Dean comes over to lane three, and he doesn't like it too well as he comes up with a split. He had to figure this was his best lane, too, and he just kind of maybe loafed on it just a little bit. Well, he didn't get through it. I doubt if you see him do this anymore the rest of the game. I'm going to just get the two pins and uh, wait for frame three on that lane. So Bowles has opened the door for Manise, and you'll recall that Manise uh, can really prove to be a front runner. The last game, Shirley uh, gave him an opportunity uh, to take the lead in the third frame, and Manise never let it go. He held on all the way to win 213 to 180 over Jamie Shirley. By the way, that moves Shirley up in our point standings to a tie for second place with uh, now let's see he is now alone in second place with 39 points he really got out of this ball good really got through it nice just solid in the pocket Still jumping out of the gate quick, and this could help him being so young. He needs just a little extra breathing room when it comes in towards the finish line. And uh, this is just exactly what he needs to get the job done. Well, he's shown he can front run, and he's got another lead. 22 pins at this point. Manise over bowls, and he rips another one. So here's a youngster that has really taken to TV bowling in a big hurry. Usually your first time in, you pay your dues. You learn your lessons. But this guy uh, got away in the first game and has not looked back. It can kind of go either way. Maybe he's so scared he can't choke. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a possibility. Well, Bowles knows he's in a serious match now, and he's working hard at it. Yeah, he's going to have to hurry up and catch up here before uh, things just get too far out of hand. If you notice the roll on this ball, is just like uh, Jamie Shirley's ball, only on the opposite side. They have that real big hook and high roll, and uh, the carry's just phenomenal. When they hit that pocket, those pins just go everywhere. Well, Dean Bowles has settled in now, and as you said, uh, he would make the adjustment on three, and he did. He split there the last time. He nails it this time, and uh, he pulls back within 22 pins of Mitch Manise. Problem is, uh, uh, Dean Bowles' problem is getting this guy off the string. Uh, you can't play defense in this game, and Manise has started perfectly with three in a row. He's also so throwing a brand-new bowling ball. It's just on the market in the last two months, so maybe that might be helping him also. Well, the string is over now as he uh, comes up light and uh, leaves a difficult spare, and that cuts into his lead. What happened here, Roy? Well, he just got just a little wide with it. Wanted to make sure he kept it to the right of the head pin. Just got it just a, out just a little too far, and the ball just didn't make it back. Finished late behind the head pin. This is a tough spare. Anytime you get this many pins up, there's a lot of things that can happen. Just like that. That's one of them. <laughs> Only one of them. There are several other choices, aren't well, there's there? There's about five or six different ways of missing that. Well, it's 84 in the fourth frame, and Manise, who had a 20, 32 pin lead at one time, is now down to a six pin margin. You're seeing our top four finishers out of our tournament at Palace Lanes. We had a great crowd there in a beautiful tournament. And here are the others uh, who uh, cashed and made money through the top 20. In fourth place, Mike Burns. 
Chuck Beagle finishes fifth and sixth. You can cash more than once, obviously. Mike Parrish cashes seventh. Dean Bowles in eighth. John Carraway Jr. ninth. Eddie Thomas finishes tenth. Dean Shields eleventh. John Irvin twelfth. Bill McCorkle thirteenth. Bill Lytle fourteenth. Ron Stromfeld finishes fifteenth. Rob Foss sixteenth. David Skaggs seventeenth. John Carraway Jr. again in eighteenth. Steve Mullen nineteenth. And Ron Johnson cashes in the twentieth spot. Roy, it seems that uh, the errant shot he threw in the fourth frame is still on his mind. He goes over to the lane that he's been hitting, and he doesn't hit it. Uh, again, he may have carried one problem uh, from one lane to another. Yeah, maybe he's just a little too cautious. Uh, he wanted to make sure that he didn't uh, get another open frame. He kept that ball just a little bit wide. Well, Dean Bowles is now on a roll. He's made one mistake this game, but he sure has made up for it. He has struck in the first, third, fourth, and fifth frames. He really gets around this ball, gets it out. From the guys that I've seen back in Columbus uh, in, in the last year or two that I have bowled around in the leagues, I would have to say this Dean Bowles has the best strike ball in the city right now. That's a very impressive statement. When, he, when he hits the 1-3, he'll get more strikes than anybody else. He, you know, he just Sometimes he gets just a little wild and gets a little bit off. When you throw a big hook like that, your spares... Uh, aren't as easy for you as someone that throws the ball a little bit straighter. So that'll hold you back. That'll make you throw two strikes for every one that you miss, for every spare that you miss. Makes his 10 pin, so Bowles uh, has a slight lead now over Manise. 107 for Bowles in the fifth frame, a spare in the sixth. He is leading by three pins. Manise needs a strike here to stay within three of the leader. And that would also, of course, give Mitch a chance to take the lead if he can double. But he first things first, He's working on a spare. He needs the first strike here. I hope he pumps up a little bit. He looks like he's just trying to be too cool. He just might get just a little too... Right? He, he carried through that time good. He looks like he's just a little bit flat. He needs just a little bit more uh, adrenaline flow in there just to make sure that he stays on, on top of uh, the shot. Setting the ball somewhere between the uh, 12th and 13th board at, at the arrows, and the ball rolls out to about the 6th or 7th board and comes all the way back. And that is a long way when you start counting the inches. Big ball for Manise. Needs the double and doesn't carry the 5 pin. He could have taken the lead had he carried that single pin. Well, he really... He really threw that ball a little bit harder, and uh, he did just what I thought he should do, but, but he got nailed by it. Uh, he got through that ball just a little too quick and didn't get a good heavy roll on it, and the ball just went a little wide, finished late in the pocket. So we are spare shooting now with Mitch Manise. Right. And we're there with a 124 score in the sixth frame and a spare up in the seventh. Our leader, Dean Bowles, moves back on the lanes. He only leads by three pins. You know, it's interesting, Roy, that this guy's never had a 300 game, and you list him at this particular time as maybe the best strike bowler in Columbus. Uh, 299 is the best he has been able to come up with. Well, a 300 just is not exactly a... a a skill game. You have to have quite a few breaks in, in, in getting the 300, just like this. You could have any one of those type of leaves in a 300 game. And there's what you were talking about a moment ago, uh, the fact that uh, you throw that much bend, you're going to miss more spares. Now he's got to throw two strikes to make up for that one error. Sooner or later it's going to get you. The only thing you can do is hope that you throw more strikes than the next guy. 135 in the seventh for Bowles, and he now trails by nine pins. <laughs> back again. Speaking of 300 games, our color analyst, Roy Buckley, with 23 300 games. Awesome number. He really got through this one, got it wide. All that turn, crank on the ball, just comes back and just sends those pins everywhere. See, he got the kick off the wall where uh, the Mitch didn't get to the last frame. He left a five pin there. Uh, Dean carried that one. Mitch leading it by nine. Now we could be in an interesting situation because Mitch is in a position now to lose the lead because Bowles is on a strike and Mitch is spare shooting. His arm flew out just a little bit to the right, wrapped in, come around, sort of what we call like a figure eight swing. 
and he just got the ball out just a little too far out around that fourth board. It just didn't make it quite back far enough. But he makes the shot, so Mitch Benice with 143 in the seventh, a spare up in the eighth, and this is a, a tight match. You know, we've been at uh, Amos Lanes now. This is our second week, and we have had some really fair, tough, good conditions, and our bowlers have responded with some excellent close matches. Well, Jim Shaw's on top of these lane conditions all the time, and he really works hard at uh, keeping things uh, under control, and uh, he's very, very conscious about the lane conditions of these centers. Ten pin stands, and Mitch Manise, who is our leader, still is in jeopardy. Just a little flat. He got a little wide, didn't want to go high, but he just didn't really get through the ball. He just, he's just not putting enough energy into it. Seems like there's an awful lot of turn and everything, but the person has to put the energy into the bowling ball. Uh, you know, that ball is just sits there. There's really nothing there. What you do to it determines what happens at the other end. And he's just not getting into it enough. Interesting. Energy. I've never heard that term used, but I understand what you're saying. We move to Dean Bowles, who is trading but can take the lead with this shot. Does not. It's got just a little wide and come in just a little bit, hey, just a little bit late on the head pin and uh, the six pin will just not get out of the gutter. Watch the six pin just kind of lay down in the gutter. Just wouldn't jump up now. I can do it to where that six pin don't even make a sound. <laughs> just kind of goes over and lays down nice and uh -huh. quiet. <laughs> okay. Your kingdom for a cranker, right? You'd still be making a bunch of money out there. Well, here we go with the, the tenth frame for Dean Bowles. He's down by seven. He's not out of the match. That didn't help. He wanted to make sure that he got up high enough to hit that 10, or, you know, kick the 10 pin out. Just got real short with it. Just not a very good shot at all. He didn't like it as soon as he let it go. Now that might cost him this one because now he's in a position where uh, even if he makes the mark here, uh, all Manis needs is a spare to win it. Well, that's so, not necessarily a gimme. Well, that's true. <laughs> I, I've seen uh, that happen before, but you do, I guess you assume that a bowler will make a spare, but that, as you say, is not always the case. Bowlers of this caliber, you do just more or less give them a spare. 193 if he strikes here. There's no immunity to that uh, gagging or choking or whatever you want to call it. There's, everybody <laughs> does it. 193 for Dean Bowles. Here's Mitch Manise in his 10th frame. He needs a mark to settle this match. And this young man is charging right through a field of veterans if he makes a mark here. He beat Jamie Shirley, who won last week's show in the opening game. Now he takes on uh, a veteran, Dean Bowles, and he's got him to the throat here. Whoa. Uh Whoa. -oh. We may have a... Uh, very tense spare shot. Now, what do you think Manise is thinking about? He knows he needs a spare. He's left it very tight. Well, all of a sudden, you know, you've got that, uh, that sleeper back there. You've got the eight pin right here. The, the key pin here is the eight pin. Uh, just a few frames ago in the fourth frame, he had that two, four, five up there. He chopped a two off the five. So he's going to stay wide enough, but if he stays too wide, he won't get through for the eight. Needs it to win the match. And he does it. Yeah, right where he had to. Tell you what, his cheeks are pretty pink, though. This guy uh, is feeling the heat, and uh, Mitch Manise has come through again for two consecutive wins today, and uh, he's got to really be pleased with his ability under pressure with that shot. That is not an easy spare. Bill McCorkle is our top seed, and he'll be on the lanes with this young man, Mitch Manise in just a couple of minutes. Mitch Manise finishes with 197 and wins it by four over Dean Bowles. We'll be back after this timeout. McCorkle Real Estate. Experts in residential and commercial real estate. Satisfied customers range from first-time home buyers, families moving to larger homes, or company transfers. Chuck Turner. Bill McCorkle made our move from Ann Arbor, Michigan as painless as possible. 
As a family-owned company, President Bill McCorkle guarantees sincere personal attention from his highly trained staff. Just dial 890-1880 and go from this to this. I'm Bob Stafford, a Mako Auto Painting Center owner. Today, with new cars costing $10,000, smart money people are keeping their present cars and restoring them for only a few hundred dollars. Now, during Mako's chain-wide winter sale, we'll change your car from this drab, dull look to this great new look with our supreme paint job. One of the best Mako offers and at half its regular price. That's right, half price if you act now. Call 1-800-345-8500 to receive a free certificate worth 50% off the Mako Supreme Paint Job. Act now before March 8th. What's he doing? Just lit a cigar and then he put it out. Bet it's a Dutch Masters or El Producto. How come? They've changed. Most of theirs don't use natural leaf wrappers anymore. Now, gosh, your bag is still an honest cigar. Gosh, your bag is still gives you the rich tobacco taste of natural leaf wrappers. He's doing it again. He ought to switch to an honest cigar. Garcia Vega, still an honest cigar. He's doing it again. Lenny, how ever did you get in this club? Simple, Baxter, the front door. Who recommended you? Ah, uh, that guy. Huh? That's the chairman of... Right. We got to talking about MCI. How they're saving businesses millions versus AT&T on long-distance calls. Your tea, sir. Thank you, Chives. For instance? Well, nearly 400 of the Fortune 500 trust MCI. MCI even has watch lines. Really? How could I have been so unaware? To some, Baxter, it's a natural gift. <laughs> Call MCI now. Here we go in our championship game, and Bill McCorkle has elected to allow Mitch Manise to start this game. McCorkle has an opportunity to move into second place on our point list if he wins this match. He'd pick up 20 points. McCorkle is uh, currently in a tie for fourth place. 20 points would put him at 39 and two behind John Irvin. Well... He's got a problem there, Roy. Yeah, this is caused mostly by his arm swing. If you watch at the top of his arm swing, the ball is flared to the right. Now watch it come back in towards his hip. Okay? Now, if he doesn't get that ball back out to the right far enough, or if he releases it too soon, the ball's going to be high. If he holds on to it too long, the ball's going in the opposite direction. So it's a very tough uh, arm swing, and, and it's not taught and not recommended. But you can get away with it tomorrow on today's conditions, and you could, and it'll be passed because of the, uh, the lack of the ball track you can throw the ball to the right farther and that swing will get you uh, allow you to go to the right a lot farther than you would with a straight arm swing speaking of straight arm swings you got one here haven't you Bill's been a, pretty much a straight arm swing he's had some problems here in, in the last uh, few years uh, this one he got out of pretty good uh, maybe we can get a little more of a direct angle right behind him uh, and we'll see the push away and the swing coming straight back. So McCorkle with a chance to take a 10-pin lead if he can strike here. Okay, well that one wasn't that good. That wasn't that good. Well, it, I'm sure he didn't like that as soon as he let go because he got just a little bit inside of his target. And this is his main problem uh, that he's really trying to work himself out of is getting too short with the ball and the ball going high on him a lot. He really has to force himself to get the ball out to the right. Bill McCorkle is a real estate broker. He's married. His wife's name is Roxanne. He has a couple of cute kids by the name of Rocky, age six, and Casey, age three. And Rocky, his uh, six-year-old, wants to say to I am Miss, Mrs. Uh, Cochran, his first grade teacher. Now, that's like taking an apple to school, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're politicians. Yeah, you talk about getting points. Uh, <laughs> Bill's going to get some, and so's Rocky. <laughs> Yeah, they never miss a trick. That's right. This is going to be a good match. This is just who makes the fewest mistakes here. And uh, it's one game for all the marbles. $400 is the top prize on the show today. 200 for second place. This time he'll get that ball plenty uh, far out to the right. He come through. He didn't flare out as much on that one as he did on the other ones. And got through the ball to the right. Got rid of it in a nice fashion. So it's even up as we go to the third frame, but Benice has the edge now because he's working the strike and a chance to double and a chance to take a 10-pin lead. I'm Dick Shore, along with our color analyst, Roy Buckley, one of the great professional bowlers of our time. 
these, these alleys are starting to break down a little bit, too, and they're going to have to start making the ball uh, go to the right just a little bit more. And anytime you start making the ball do something, uh, you just don't become as fluent and, and as accurate or don't carry the pins as well. Uh, you try to fit the ball, and then you start leaving the fours and the tens or the sixes and the sevens uh, if you're left-handed. Well, Manise is clean, but he doesn't have any uh, strings going here. It's 40 in the second and a spare up, and McCorkle started with a strike, came back with a spare, and now Bill is on the right lane again. He struck here last time. Really got through that one good. Watch this arm come straight back, straight forward. Good projection. That he, he got that ball out over the foul line very well. Uh, the ball almost went to the dots or, or a little bit farther than the dots on the fly, which um, by the dots, it's about six feet over the foul line. And that's quite a ways. You try and throw the ball over top of those, and then you've really got the ball out on the lane. He'll take it. Well, he got lucky. He's trying to get the ball out so much that uh, that time he just got a little bit inside of it. And it looks like he's changed angles here. He's moved a lot farther inside because the ball's hooking more. He just didn't get the good projection to the right. We he may got... see him make another move after that shot. Well, he may not move so much with his feet, but he will make a different uh, a move with his body and projection. So McCorkle is up by 10. Manise working on a spare. And he gets a break there. Thin hit, and he carries it. Now, I think Manisa's moves are going to be mostly with flip and turn. He's just going to flip the ball out farther to the right to try and turn it a little bit harder so that the ball slides a little bit more. Well, of... This young rookie's made some big moves today, winning over Jamie Shirley in the opening game and then knocking off Dean Bowles in game two, and that's put him into the finals here. He's bowled very well. He's looking for 20 points today, which would put him uh, right... Uh, into the top ten for sure. Excellent shot. Two in a row for Manise, and he's starting to make a move now. Really got through it. Hit that ball very well with the fingers, and if you notice, he flew the ball out over those dots on the fly, too. Really got a uh, good lift and turn on the ball. McCorkle working on two in a row. The match is tied. He can take a ten-pin lead again, and he does. McCorkle with three in a row and four out of five. Okay, good push away, straight back. He'll get this ball well out over the foul line. Didn't get that one quite as far as the other one, but he got the good projection with the arm swing. But isn't uh, his balance superb? You very seldom see him turn a foot at the foul line. It's usually straight at the target. Yeah, the only problem he may have other than that, he's a little stiff-legged, and then, then there's several of us that do get rid of the ball with little, what's kind of a stiff leg. Well, we'll be back uh, after these messages. Uh, sir? Yes? If I said you can now buy this famous Kuppenheimer suit for 40% less than other quality brands, what would you say? I'd say it's stolen. <laughs> Assuming it's not stolen. Kuppenheimer for 40% less? Right. Mm -hmm. No, look, Kuppenheimer makes its famous clothing and sells direct. But no middleman, you save 40%. 40%? Right. You'll never get away with this, you know. Stealing famous Kuppenheimer. Kuppenheimer Direct. Value so good, it's hard to believe. For over 40 years, Central Ohio borrowers have relied on Modern Finance Company when a cash loan is required. Look for the modern side in your area. Today, modern associates are ready and willing to continue the modern tradition of friendly, courteous service. A phone call will start your loan request on its way. You can count on Modern to take care of your cash needs from fifty to fifty thousand dollars. Just call your nearby Modern office. Be modern, be modern Drug Emporium prices will stop you in your tracks. We do enjoy having you in the store. But our neck snapper prices will stop you. And fast. So shop Drug Emporium and be astounded. Be surprised. Be amazed. But be careful. Saving so big, you'll need a shopping cart. Hi, friends. I'm Bill Swart, and I'd like to invite you out to Bill Swart Chevrolet right away. No doubt you've heard... On the news media, there's been a substantial price increase 
in the cost of new cars to dealers. We've thought ahead. We've got over 400 brand new cars at the old price and some at the old, old price. Yes, some 84s left. Real big savings. You still buy a brand new Chevrolet right here at Bill Squad Chevrolet for the full price of only $4,899. And remember this, during this great sale, only $98 down. So hurry out while the supply lasts. And remember this, we're the big, big Chevrolet dealer on the east side here in Columbus, only $98 down. Well, there's our leader, and he's pacing like a caged tiger during our commercial break. He's ready to go. He has three in a row working. He's up by 10. He can increase it to 20 if he can get this one on the left lane. He's hit this lane the last time. And now the last two. He did not hit it back in the second frame. He was really working hard on that. I I know that he didn't move too much. He just made sure that he got that ball projected to the right. Now they were fouling. You saw there that he really worked that ball out to the right because last time he went to the left of the head pin. You know, I think it bothered him a bit that we uh, broke for commercials. Of course, that's part of TV. But he wanted to keep going, as you might expect when he's on a string. Yeah, well, he kept going, but he wasn't throwing the ball. He was moving. He, had, he, had <laughs> he did pace, moving. didn't he? Yeah, and there was a very lucky break. That might have just kept this young fellow in the match. And he just, he just lost this ball at the bottom of the downswing. That arm looked really like it flared out. Got rid of the ball real direct on the lane. He didn't get the ball out to the right at all and then just got away with it. There he was so bad he was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's three in a row for Manise. He's back within 10. He can tie it here if he can strike on the left side. That gets him even with McCorkle. McCorkle threw one there in the fourth frame the same way. That's right. They each have had a break. High single game this year. 243 by John Irvin, and uh, this year the high single game will bring a sport coat and slacks from Kuppenheimer Factory Stores. The winner of the series is suit, shirt, and tie from Kuppenheimer, and our thanks to Irv Boyman. A 300 game, a $700 VCR from Magnavox and Appliance Centers, and a free auto paint job from Mako. Of course, that is no longer a possibility on today's program. Okay. Manise, keep rolling. And McCorkle also with four in a row. And five in a row. He felt he really got a break there, Roy. He felt he was really high. Yeah, he did. He really he really got uh, really got a roll here. He just didn't get the ball out over the foul line. He was just a little bit short, which is his main problem. See that ball? And it bounced a little bit as he got rid of it. And the ball just uh, went just a little high. But that uh, head pin come in there and tore the 4-7 out of there. That was really a lucky break. Well, Bill is notorious for losing high-scoring matches. I mean, he's been beaten on this show by probably an average of 245. And uh, this time, he has it going his way, but he leaves the seven pin here. I've never seen him lose a match or win, let's say, win a cheap match. Every time he gets beat, it's with a big score. Here he's trying to force the ball so far to the right. He got that elbow out to the right. If you notice, his elbow is out. He could have knocked a person over on the next alley with his elbow <laughs> if there was someone standing over there. Man, that's just, just part of the game. That's body control. All right. Normally, uh, with the uh, line that McCorkle throws, he doesn't miss many spares, and he makes that one uh, solidly. 179 in the seventh, a spare up in the eighth. McCorkle leads by nine, but look out. This young fella can take a one-pin lead. If he strikes, it would be his fifth consecutive strike. Well, he threw the ball on the left of the head pin on this lane the last time, and he hadn't been here too many times. So let's see what he does this time. He's not going to roll over because he's bowled awful well here, but uh, let's see what he does here. For a one-pin lead, the youngster. Oh, you talk about breaks. I can't believe McCorkle's luck. He is running into another buzzsaw. This is really high. This is just a little bit of everything. Uh, the trip four. Uh, see, uh, he just got too direct right down to the 11th board. Ball went out to about nine. Most of the time he was going like uh, somewhere across the uh, 13th, 12th, 13th board out to about four. That one never got farther than uh, the 7th board. He, he breaks up the four, seven, ten. Uh, that was just a, that was a bonus there. And as uh, most of our bowlers on this program do, when they get a break, they come back and absolutely jam it right in the hole. So Manise has a lead of 11 and has McCorkle in serious trouble again. I would really like to go back through the years and just see what the scores were that beat this guy. He's still in this one, but he's got to really hurry now. 
Hey. Had to have that one. No, he's not done either. But he's... Okay, here's the push away. Just knee in there, but now is where he's starting to kind of stiffen up. He rears up there at the line, and that's where his major problem is. That's one of my major problems also. That's what kept me from being better than what I was. It's, he does it the same almost every time, and you can get in position to do well or to win, but it'll keep you from winning. It, it won't keep you from getting in position, but it will keep you from winning. It's just a flaw in your game. It's just... It's like you just didn't take good enough care of yourself before you got a cold, but by the time you got a cold, it was too late to take care of yourself. <laughs> All right. Tenth frame opener, big ball for McCorkle, and he is in big trouble now as he leaves the baby split. Yeah, he just didn't get any good projection on this at all. Now he's really broke down a lot, and he really has to force the ball out to the right. And with that rearing up, it's just real tough. It's easier to, to go high or up and at him with that type of release and to go away and bring the ball back. I don't know if McCorkle has a bad luck or the other guys just have real good luck. I don't know what it is either, but it appears to me that McCorkle's going to get beat today by, again, the highest score of the year by young Mitch Manise. Manise is struck in every frame but two, and he is spared in those two. 243 is our high single game, well within reach of this young man. And what a debut he has had on the Columbus Bowling Classic. $400 Richard, 20 points Richard. That'll put him up in the uh, top 10 in points. Comes back next week, no matter what. That's right, there's at least another five points, but he loses that single pin, and that will considerably dilute his uh, beautiful score, but it still could be a 249, which would be the high single game of the year. McCorkle shoots 227 and uh, back to the uh, uh, drawing board. Well, he'll be back. It's not the last time you'll see him. <laughs> in fact, I believe 227 is the highest score we have had, or it ties the highest score we have had in two weeks here at Amos Lane's, but on the time he rolls it, it's not enough. Okay, he's moved all the way to the left. He'll probably shoot somewhere between the third and the fourth arrow. Project the ball across the lane. You know, a lot of people shoot uh, the spares at the wrong angle, and they'll miss them, and they'll say, oh, I really threw the ball bad. Maybe they didn't throw the ball bad. They just didn't throw it in the proper place. And once you find out the different angles and the proper angles in which to play, the game becomes much easier. Well, there's a 246 score for young Mitch Benice. That's the high single game of the year and a brilliant victory over Bill McCorkle with 227. We'll be back in award prizes after this timeout. Did you know that when you shop Graham Ford, you get a minimum of $1,000 trade-in allowance on anything you drive in? Plus, you have over 600 cars, trucks, and vans to choose from. Even the Mustang convertible is in stock at Graham Ford. So whatever it might be, in whatever color, or with whatever options, you're sure to find what you want at the big one, Graham Ford, 707 West Broad Street in Columbus. And remember, the price is right at Graham. With that big selection, you're sure to win. It's big. It means savings. And, and it's, it's going, going on, on now. The Columbus Magnavox and Appliance After Inventory Clearance Sale. All inventory is reduced now for a quick sale. This Magnavox 25-inch color console TV, now just $3.99. This 25-watt audio rack system, now just $2.99. The After Inventory Clearance on now at Columbus Magnavox and Appliance, North, East, and West. Columbus Magnavox and Appliance, the big, big voice, voice in quality. quality. The last word in price. My favorite chicken recipe is the delectable chicken Monica. This is chicken, makes the true art. Hello. Here's how we start. Hello. Hello, Monica. Don't hang up. I'll never do that again. How about dinner? Your place. I'll bring the beer. Natural light. The beer with the taste for food. You know, the blue on the label matches your eyes. Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's natural light from Anheuser-Busch. And the gold on the label matches your hair. 
Are you tired of hiding that old dining room set when company's over? Value City Furniture has hundreds of beautiful dining rooms like this one for only $5.98. Does that old couch of yours have more lumps than a prize fighter's face? Come on in to Value City Furniture. We have hundreds of sofas like this one for only $2.98. Come on in during Value City Furniture's 90 days same as cash sale. Yes, 90 days same as cash. Come on in. Come explore why pay more Value City Furniture. Guy on my right is the first vice president of the Columbus Bowling Proprietors Association and general manager here at Amos Lanes. Let's welcome Jim Shaw. Thank you, Doug. Jim, I want to tell you what. We've had two great weeks here at Amos. That's great. Really we appreciate really having the boys back here again. Well, the thing I liked was the fact we had very honest scoring conditions and some really excellent close matches. Last week may have been one of the best we've ever had. And this week, well, you've been on this show many times and you've watched Bill McCorkle many times. He is snake bit. Uh, he shoots the highest score of the two weeks until uh, Mitch Benice comes along and shoots the highest score of the year. That's the way the game goes, though, isn't it? I guess it is, but it seems like it goes that way every year for Bill. Mitch, congratulations on a big victory. For a rookie, you came through this field in big shape. Thanks. And poor old Bill. Uh, one more time back to the workshop, huh? Okay. Well, anyway, Jim, I really appreciate the uh, conditions and the fun we've had here in Amos and uh, look forward to coming back seeing you uh, again. Thank you very much. Okay, and to our color analyst, Roy Buckley, uh, what more can I say other than uh, one of the great bowlers of our time? A uh, uh, bunch of national titles, 16th on the all-time money list, and some really interesting analysis of our bowlers today, Roy. Uh, we learned an awful lot from you. Well, I hope so, and uh, the game's very interesting. There's more to it than what just meets the eye. You know, you, you can watch it for days and years, but you never really learn the fundamentals unless you really get into the scientific part of it. You say you're still learning? Oh, all the time. You know, I'm learning more every day. Well, uh, you know, the more you know about it, the more you find out you don't know about it. How would you like to put that knowledge back into a 19-year-old body again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like stealing, huh? Well, I don't know about that. There's a whole lot of 19-year-old bodies out there. So, uh, yeah, but not with, that, with, with the knowledge you've had over years of being out there. Well, you know, they say uh, youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> Darned if that isn't a fact, Jack. Okay, Roy, thank you very much for being with us. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. It's great being here. Okay, and we'll be back again next Saturday with the Columbus Bowling Classic. Hope you'll join us on Channel 6. Goodbye, everybody. The Columbus Bowling Classic, in conjunction with the Columbus Bowling Proprietors Association, has been brought to you by Modern Finance, the Simple Interest Loan Company, by Columbus Magnavox and Appliance Centers, with three locations to serve you. By Graham Ford, the big one, 707 West Broad Street. And by Kuppenheimer Factory Stores, where you buy men's suits, sport coats, and slacks direct from the manufacturer. Gardeners, here's a revolutionary new machine from the makers of the famous Troy-built rototiller.